Let me just tell you what the enemy thinks about them. That's what the enemy hears when he hears love and mercy and peace and grace and joy. The Bible says that joy will be your strength in the morning. Your strength against who? The devil. This month, the month of March, we're going to be, we're going to be uh, in a series called Battle Plan. And um, I believe this is a, uh, this is a series that, that's very important to us because, well, like Cody said, <laughs> when everybody around you starts talking about the same thing at the same time, you know God's up to something. And, and, if, you, and if you start to pay attention to spirit-filled people around you, people that are seeking God with all their heart and, and, and asking for His guidance and looking for and tuned in to what He's doing, um, you will start to see a pattern in, in those people. And if you're in that pattern, then, then that's a good place to be. Right? Now, why do you, why do you need a battle plan? Because you're in a battle. That's why, Right? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about that, but I want I want you to um, I want you to kind of understand right off the bat where where we're coming from here. And today I'm going to use this uh, I'm going to use this this sermon today to kind of lay some foundation to um, to to look at a big picture, lay some foundation, and and we're going to break out one one principle of the battle plan, and then in the next several weeks, we're going to unpack that. So, so you're going to want to be here for the whole plan, right? Nobody just wants the first page of a set of instructions, right? You ever, you ever try to put like a stroller together or a, uh, you know, a, 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 what's that thing called that babies sleep in? A crib, that thing, yeah, I can't. It's been a long time. Yeah, anyway, um, you, you know, when, you, ever try to, you ever try to put something like that together, but you only have the first page of the instructions? That's not a good, not a good plan, right? So, um, so make sure that you're, that you're in on this, because, because I believe God has some pretty amazing things in store for us. And uh, yeah, so hey, I want to appreciate uh, Ken for bringing it last week and uh, preaching last week. Yeah, we... Um, and it, it's nice to be able to, to, take a, to take a Sunday off and, and know that things are in good hands. And, and so um, I, I, I very much appreciate him and, and his word to us. And we're actually going to cover, um, he's going he's gonna to think that I'm re-preaching his sermon. I'm not, although we're using the same portion of Scripture. But it, listen, Scripture is like a diamond, Right? You can sit and stare at that thing all day long and just turn it a little bit and it looks totally different, right? And, and that's, how, that's how I think Scripture is meant to be, uh, to be looked at. So we're, we're going to look at um, First, Peter, First Peter chapter 2, but today I want to I talk to you about this. I want to talk to you about the mission. Remember the old, uh, the old spy movies, the old, you know, this is your mission if you choose to accept it, right? And then it blows up and you know the phone booth explodes or something I don't <clears throat> we have a mission if you're a Christian you are not called to be a pedestrian anymore if you're a Christian you are no longer called to just be a part of the a, a part of the the masses you are called out and we talked about this last in the last series, last month, you were set apart. But you're set apart for a reason. And you're set apart to be something, to, to make a difference, to have an impact. And if, you, and if you don't believe that, listen, here's what you will be, a casualty. You'll be a victim. You'll be the, you'll be the stain that gets left on the ground after the battle is over. If you don't understand that you are here to fight this battle, that you're here to be, to be in this battle, 
And, and so I, I'm gonna, I want to talk to you about that uh, today. And, and as, we, as we work through this, I want you to understand this. This is the point that, that the, the whole series is kind of built around. War has been declared on your soul, but God has provided us with kingdom weapons and a battle plan for victory. War has been declared on your soul. You don't, you don't have to declare war. It's already done. That's already taken care of. Back in uh, December 7th, 1941, does that, does that ring a bell for anybody? It's the day that we'll live in infamy. Because it is the day that the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. Up to that point, the, the, the United States had tried almost everything they could try, we could try, to stay out of World War II. We had ignored it. It was already spread all over the world, and we had pretended like nothing was happening. We had tried to, tried to you know, uh, use diplomacy and, and stay out of the fight. We, we, we had tried to pretend that it wasn't really affecting us, that it wasn't really moving in on us while Europe was, was blowing up and, and the, the Pacific was blowing up and everywhere around us was coming. There's a reason we call it World War II, right? It was all over the world. And we were trying to stay out of it. But on December 7th, 1941, we got a dose of reality that we had never had in this country. We were attacked in Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. We were attacked by, German, by, by Japanese forces. And it wasn't until after the attack it wasn't until after the devastating damage and destruction and casualties that we sustained in our Navy and Air Force at Pearl Harbor that we finally said, hmm, maybe there's a war going on around us. Maybe we ought to wake up and do something about this. Listen, Christian, I want you to understand that there is a war going on around you. And you can sit around on your hands and pretend like it's not really happening. You can sit around in your nice, neat little bubbles and pretend that the, that the world is not blowing up around you. But let me, just, let me just turn on the lights. The world is blowing up around you. And we were put here to fight the battle. We were put here to fight for what God believes, for what God teaches, for what God has led us into in the Scripture, through the Scripture, to, to teach people a better way. The world is blowing up around us and the culture that we have around us is telling us all kinds of crazy things that make no sense whatsoever, but we buy into them hook, line, and sinker because we don't want to stand our ground. Because we don't want to take the opposition that it's going to require. Because we don't want to be put in that place of being a target. But just like Cody said, you, here's how you fight the battle. You stand up. And you stand there. And you don't get pushed back. You see, God has given us weapons to use. But they are not the kind of weapons that the world understands. You see, the world understands weapons that are mass destruction. The world understands weapons that, that tear people down, that beat people up, that destroy things, that ruin things. After World War II, all of Europe was basically in shambles. They had to start from the ground up, from the rubble, and rebuild. Even in Japan, our retaliation was one of the most horrific retaliations that modern warfare has ever seen in Hiroshima. But we fight for the kingdom. We fight with kingdom weapons. We fight with a different kind of arsenal that is not like the world's weapons. In 1 Peter 
chapter 2, verse 11, it, it says this, and this is the declaration of war against you. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul which wage war, which has declared war on your soul. Your soul is a, is a might as well be like an island in the ocean that, that another country is fighting for dominance of, right? Like when Japan attacked Hawaii, they were attacking America. They were attacking a part of America. When you get attacked by the enemy, the, the enemy is attacking the kingdom. And you need to understand that you have the you not only have the right, you have the you have the mission to defend the kingdom. To stand, to take your stand and defend the kingdom and to not and to not let that kingdom be overrun by the enemy. You're at war whether you acknowledge it or not, and the war is against your soul. You see, the, the devil wants your soul. This, your soul, there, there are three parts of you. The, the, I, I, there are three parts to your existence. You are the flesh on the outside. The part that everybody sees. The part that interacts with the world. The part that is a part of this world and, and has the cravings of this world. That is called your flesh in the Scripture. The middle part of you is your soul, and I'll come back to that one. The inner part of you is your spirit or your heart, right? Your spirit is that place of you that is made in the image of God. It is that part of you that is connected with God, that when you connect with God, you connect with Him in spirit and in truth, because in spirit there is only truth. You cannot lie to yourself in your spirit. You cannot believe the lies in your spirit. That's the part of you that is made in the image of God. But it is that middle part called the soul that is not only under attack, it is the prize. When we go out you know, to evangelize, to reach people for Christ, what do we call it? We call it soul winning. We don't call it flesh winning. That's just weird. Right? Kind of. We don't call it spirit winning because here's the thing the spirit's already, already there. But you can quench the spirit. You can shut down the spirit. You can close off the spirit. You can disconnect the spirit through the condition of your soul. The, the Greek word for this word that's most translated uh, soul is the word psyche. Psyche, like psychology. In other words, your soul is that place of you where you think. This is why the Apostle Paul says, take captive every thought, test it, make it approved of Christ. Why? Because the battle happens on the six-inch battlefield between your temples in your soul. It's that place where you interpret the things that are going on around you. It's that place where, where you feel and experience emotions how you understand the reality, the seeming reality around you. The condition of your soul will have extraordinary impact on how you perceive reality. If your soul is under attack, if your soul is beaten down and, and, and you're in that deep, dark place in your soul, that deep, dark night of the soul where depression and, and oppression and, and, and all of that has taken over, everything in the world becomes dark and dim, right? Everything in the, nothing, nothing feels happy anymore. Nothing feels light and, and, and joyful anymore because your soul has burdened down over your spirit. But if we understand that our soul is saved, that our soul has been rescued by Christ, that our soul has been set free by Jesus, then we get to operate in a whole different way, you know, at a whole different level. So I, I want to I help you understand what this, this whole sin idea does to us. 
in, in um, what, what sin really is, that, that he says that, you know, this abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Sin has declared war on your soul, and the goal of sin is to disconnect you from God. Disconnection from God, it has one word definition, it's death. To be connected with God is life. To be disconnected from God is death. Jesus said, I have overcome and I have given you life. I have given you connection with God. Reconnected with God. When we are connected with God, we are no longer in death. We have crossed over from death to, say it, life. Come on, wake up. Death to life. Death to life, that's connection with God. That's what it means to wake, to, 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 to be in that place where we know who we are. The more we ignore this threat, the more vulnerable we become. The more we, listen, when, when you ignore the threat that is against your soul, you become collateral damage. You become the victim. You become the casualty. Because you were put here to fight. You were put here to run into the burning building, not to stand and watch it burn down. Come on. If you're standing watching a, a, you know, a, a house in the neighborhood burn down and a bunch of fire, you know, a bunch of fire trucks pull up and the firemen jump off and they got all their stuff on and, and they just walk up beside you and man, that's a big fire. Wonder who's gonna do anything about that? You'd be like, what are you doing? You're the fireman. You were called. You're equipped. You have been given the equipment. You've been given the training. You've been given all that you need to run into that fire and to destroy that fire. Listen, what is the greatest weapon against fire? Is water. Who's carrying the water? Where are the water carriers? Right? Jesus says, you are a wellspring of water. It is coming up out of you and it is overflowing through you. You are the bearer of the water of life because you have been called to run into the fire and to put it out. What is fire? But see, we're not called to destroy. We're called to build. We're called to reclaim. John 10.10 10, says this, that... The thief comes. The thief is the devil. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come to, that they may have life and have it to the full. Listen, the devil has a three-part battle plan. It's not very complicated. Number one, steal everything you can. Steal your joy. Steal your peace. Steal your patience, your kindness, your gentleness. Steal your peace of mind. Steal everything that he can from you. Take away your hope. If he can get your hope away from you, he's got you. Steal your love for others. Steal your connection with God and steal your connection with others. If He can take those things away from you by getting you distracted enough, by getting you focused on the wrong things, He can steal whatever you have. And He can take it right out from under you. Number two is to kill it. Kill everything that He can around you. To, to kill your joy. To kill your hope. To kill anything that, that gives you life. Because that's the opposite of kill, right? It's to give life. And number three is to destroy. To destroy anything that comes in your midst. Anything that, 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 it, it, that, that you hold dear. Anything that gives you any sense of, of contentment or or peace, love, happiness, any of that, if he can get a hold of that and destroy it. Now listen, here's why we need to understand the devil's battle plan. 
Because if we can understand the devil's battle plan, we can make sure that we never enter into agreement with him, into connection concert with him. Hello? Listen, when you, when you get mad about something, you get angry about something, and you jump on Facebook or you jump on Twitter and, and you just start letting venom come out your fingertips into the atmosphere, into that other person, and well, they say, right? All you're doing is entering into the devil's battle plan. Here's the thing about it, though. We look at the weapons from the world's perspective and not from the kingdom perspective. Let me give you an example. Here's, here's, Cody told me about this Momo thing. Anybody heard of this Momo thing? This thing is evil. It's like this, I, I decided not to put the picture up because I don't even want to look at it. It's like this weird face with these big bug eyes and this big weird mouth. And apparently what they're trying to do with this is they're trying to, they're, they're trying to embed it in children in in videos on YouTube where little children are watching and then all of a sudden somewhere uh, you know amongst you know the the cartoons and the rainbows and the songs and all this this Momo face pops on and it's like like that and, and it starts to tell kids evil things like you should go take pills from the from the cabinet and eat them you you should hurt yourself and you should do all these bad things and and listen I want you to know when I heard that, like when Cody told me that, I, y'all know I was a soldier for a long time, right? There's a warrior that lives inside of me, and I learned to fight with the world's weapons very well for a very long time. And, and, and there is something wells up inside of me, and, and I want to start, I want to see blood, right? I, I want to go, I mean, I, you don't want in here. It's scary in here. It can get scary up in here when I get, when I get like, my blood starts to boil and I can start to feel it coming up out of there. There is some violence that, that could be released on some, like, I'm just, I'm just imagining one of my little grandkids watching these videos thinking it's all innocent and pure and all of a sudden this, you know, this thing comes out of there and, and it, and it starts telling them these evil things and speaking evil into their lives. And you know what I want to do with that? I want to hunt that sucker down. Whoever did, I want to hunt them down. I want to tie them up. I want to beat them with a stick. I want to kick them in the... Okay, are you with me? Yeah, I know you're with me because you're clapping. And that's exactly the wrong thing to do. Because all I'm doing when I do that is reflecting what they are doing. They're bringing evil and destruction, kill, steal, and destroy into the world. And it's making me want to reflect it right back like a mirror and kill, steal, and destroy them right back. That is not how we fight in the kingdom. Nuh-uh. That is not how. Those are weak weapons. Those are weapons that have not worked throughout the history of humanity. How do I know? Because we're still fighting. Because they're still out there. But listen, when we begin to fight with the weapons of the kingdom and we begin to understand the destructive nature, the devastating nature of our weapons against the enemy. See, here's the thing. If you look at a powerful weapon... It all depends on your perspective. Are you on the delivering end or the receiving end? Because if you're on the delivering end of a, a, you know, a, a, an M60 machine gun, that's a, that's a powerful weapon. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm like, I love that. You know, if you're on the receiving of that thing, it's a whole different ballgame. Right? But what we need to understand is the power of the weapons that we've been given to deploy. That when we think of things like love and peace and gentleness and mercy and grace, we think of them as soft and fluffy and rainbows and unicorns frolicking through the flowers. <laughs> right? We do. That's how we think of them. But listen, let, let me tell you, let me just tell you what the enemy thinks about them. That's what the enemy hears when he hears love and mercy and peace and grace and joy. 
The, the Bible says that joy will be your strength in the morning. Your strength against who? The devil. He is your, the joy of the Lord will be my strength. The joy of the Lord will be my howitzer, my M1 Abram tank that is going to blow your business up. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at the things that God has given us. Here's what I think. You know, this Momo thing, instead of hunting them down and choking them out as if we could, because it's probably some loser that lives in his mom's basement somewhere, you know, 36-year-old with Cheetos all over his fat, hairy belly. <laughs> instead, of, instead of hunting him down, how about if we declare war on the spirit that is in his head? How about if we declare war on that spirit? Because the, the book of Ephesians says it, 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 our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our get, battle is against the principalities and powers of this dark world. Our battle is a spiritual battle and it must be fought with spiritual weapons. And, 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 the, and the Scripture says that we have weapons that break down strongholds, that tear down the strongholds of the enemy. Where are those strongholds? Those strongholds are in the minds of the people who the devil is oppressing. The people are not our enemy. The devil is. And we have been saved and redeemed and restored and equipped to wage war against he who wages war against our soul. We have to enter into that battle understanding the weapons that we fight with. The weapons that we have. Listen, Ephesians 2, 1-3 through 3 says this, as, you, as for you, you were dead, in other words, disconnected. You were disconnected from God. That's what that means. You were disconnected from, it, it, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Because that's what sin does. It disconnects you in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the rulers of the kingdom of the air, that's the devil, and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. That is the spiritual forces that are at work in the minds of people who are vulnerable because they are outside of the kingdom. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, and following the desires and thoughts. Following its desires and thoughts. The cravings of our flesh, the outer layer, and that layer is having an impact on the middle layer, the desires and thoughts. Your soul. Is anybody with me? Like the rest, we by nature, this is a natural phenomenon, we by nature, nature deserve we're deserving of wrath the wrath of god but but god right you got to like some big butts in the bible but god changed everything this is one big little three letter word but because of His love for us. The weapon that He used against the enemy to destroy the enemy and to destroy the enemy's plan. What weapon was it? Love. Listen, love is not just to... Love is not... We have this crazy idea going on in our culture right now that if I disagree with anything that you say, I am operating in hatred. That's not hatred. If you're doing something stupid, right? If you're doing something that's killing you, the last thing I want to do is agree with that. That is the opposite of love. If you're drinking poison and I'm like, well, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to offend them. Get over the... Listen, church, come on. Let's just, just all hold out your hands like this right now and, and just receive... Receive the freedom of the spirit of offense. We live in a nation, in a country where everybody is just 
thirsting and hunger to be offended by something. Get over that. That is from the devil. It is evil. It is pride. Well, you can't say that to me. Get over yourself. Get over your pride. Live a life that God called you to live. Actually live worthy of the life that called, that you're called to. Rise up to the occasion that God has called you to. Live in what God has given to you. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship or handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God's battle plan to defeat, to defeat the enemy. Here's what God's battle plan is. Reclaim what has been lost. If the enemy's battle plan is to steal it, then God's battle plan is to reclaim it. To revive what has been killed. If the enemy's battle plan is to kill it, God's battle plan is to resurrect it. And restore what has been destroyed. If it, the enemy's battle plan is to destroy it, then God's battle plan is to restore it. And listen, listen. Hear what I'm about to say. He's going to use us to do it. We are... Listen. When, when, we, when we as a nation declare war on another nation... The President of the United States declares the war from Washington. How many of you know the President of the, of, the, of the United States doesn't go to the other nation and fight it? Uh-uh. He sends the Army. He sends the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps. Right? They go on his behalf. Guess why we're here, church? We are here as ambassadors of Christ on His behalf to wage war against that which has declared war on our souls. Sin and disconnection. That's why we're here. That's why we exist. So, so listen, he says, so consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but citizens of, with God, with, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of His household built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus Himself as the chief cornerstone. In Him, the whole building is joined to rise, is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in, what, in which God lives by His Spirit. Listen, Jesus needs a dwelling on this earth so that He can wage war. We are the dwelling. We are the package that has been filled with the Holy Spirit sent into the world to wage war against sin. That which disconnects us from God. We fight for connection. Our mission is to be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit fights through us, where the Holy Spirit brings divine power, divine weaponry, divine everything. <laughs> so, know your weapons. Know your weapons is step number one in the battle plan. You got to know your weapon. You got to understand what you have at your disposal to do war with. Here's how I think 1 Peter breaks it down. He says, Live such good lives among pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits. Here is the first weapon doing good do good when you're tempted when you're tempted to choke that thing out right <laughs> like this momo thing you know we're tempted to hunt them down choke them out no 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 
what we need to do is we need to start with prayer. We start with connecting with God by understanding the grace of God that saved me is the same grace that can save whoever created that from those demonic oppressions that are coming on them and they can be set free and released and redeemed and restored right back to where God wanted them to be just like He has done for us. And we have to stand in the gap, stand on the wall and fight with love. Fight by doing good not more evil in the world. Come on. Submit yourselves to the, for the Lord's sake in every human authority, whether the emperor is supreme authority, governors who are sent by Him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Submission and surrender. Anything that you think of as war as a, as a warfare weapon in the world, especially a thought process warfare weapon, like violence, beat them down, tear them up, destroy them, blow them up, those kind of things, right? In the kingdom, flip it upside down. It is always opposite. But listen, it is just as Devast no, no. It is more devastating to the enemy. To the enemy. Listen, we, we think of light as a good thing. We think of darkness as an evil thing, right? But which one do you think of as more powerful? A lot of times we think, oh, the darkness and the, and the, you know, the badness and all that, that's more powerful and that's scary and that makes me want to run away. But the light, that's... No, listen. The light is more powerful if you're darkness. What does light do to darkness? Light is devastating to darkness. Light is destructive to darkness. L darkness cannot survive. It gets eradicated and obliterated when light enters the room. When you enter the room, the enemy feels your violence. Come on. When you walk in in the power of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of that demonic oppression fills you. He knows you're there. When Jesus walked in the room, they said, Ooh, what are you going to do to us, Jesus? We know who you are. And they back up. They don't say, oh, look what I'm going to do to you, Jesus. No, 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 no. It ain't that kind of party. They're like, whoa, what are you going to do to us? When we submit and surrender to God's will, when we allow God to flow to us and through us, it makes us a powerful, it makes us special forces against the enemy. Live as free people, not, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Third weapon is freedom. Because if the enemy can get you tangled up, tangled up, enslaved, in bondage, uh, committed to some kind of something or other, whether it's some kind of thought process, some kind of addiction, some kind of, of relationship that you know you're not supposed to be in, some kind of confusion and identity crisis where you're not even quite sure what gender you are anymore. Listen, this is the attack that is on our... We look in the mirror and we see ourselves, and then we say, nope, I think I'm a woman. I'm like, nope, pretty sure I'm a dude. But in this world, the enemy has so confused us and so calcified the minds that we believe something that we know is not true. And we need freedom from that. You need freedom from that oppression. You need freedom from that lie. Ask yourself in your spirit, is this truth or is this lie? Don't ask your flesh. Uh-uh, it's confused. Don't ask your soul because it can be influenced. Ask your spirit because that's what's connected to 
God in spirit and in truth. And that's where we find freedom. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. The, the third weapon is your heart. Be given your heart to Him. Be given your heart to Him. Respect, love, reverence, honor for God and others. This is how we live out a heart condition heart that is given over to God, that is given to Him, that's our battle plan. That's our battle plan. That's how we're going to win this war. Yeah, amen. Thank you. Until we understand the power of the kingdom, we're going to be an enemy of the world. No, no. Until we understand the power of the kingdom and the weapons that we wield from the kingdom, we will be the enemy and victim. We will, not the enemy. We will be the victim. We will be the victim of the world. We will be the victim of the devil. We will be the victim of the demonic forces. But listen, you weren't sent here to be a victim. You were sent here to be free. You were sent here to be powerful. You were sent here to be a source of love. You were sent here to represent your king. And to win on his behalf. Let's all stand up. Oh, I feel it today. Anybody feel it? I'm feeling it today. Lord, I just know that you have power from on high for us. Lord, this world is waging war against our souls. Waging war against our thought processes. Waging war against our identity. Waging war against our values and what we know to be true and believe and trust. So Lord, we ask for divine power. For divine strength. For divine weaponry and, and equipment against the spiritual powers of this dark world. Not against the people that are being oppressed by them. Because people are not our enemy. The devil is our enemy. The demons are our enemy. And so Lord, we're going to love people while we do battle against those powers that are tearing them down, beating them up, enslaving them, killing, stealing, and destroying the things that matter to you. And we've been called to stand in the gap, to stand on that wall, to defend, and to attack. And so Lord, we just ask you that right now you would just give us a supernatural a supernatural indwelling of Your presence, of Your Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and empower us by all strength. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.